Hi, welcome back to Utah ADV. Uh, here I am talking to myself in my garage again. I'm glad you're with me. Um, before I get started about uh, the tools that I have on both of these bikes, um, there are a couple things that I really overlooked in the last video, uh, the last YouTube clip about the Triumph Explorer. And so I just wanted to touch on a couple of those things and then move into the tools. The first of which um, is that it has an adjustable windscreen. And this was back, you know, back in 2014 when uh, there were no, uh, there's not a servo motor attached to it. There's no switch. It doesn't go up and down electronically. It's the old diehard manual kind of adjusting windshield, which is exactly how I like it. Um, the, the, there's less to go wrong, right? Without all the electronics and things like that going on. At least that's what we tell ourselves when we don't have the luxury of, of electronic servo motors. Speaking of which though, the throttle on this thing, and this is, the, the bike's parked right here, if, if you can't see that in the frame. Uh, the throttle on this is fly-by-wire, meaning there is not a, uh, a, a regular cable connect between this and the throttle bodies on the motorcycle. It's all done digitally. Um, and then that can, you know, completely contradict what I just said about the fact that the windshield doesn't have any servo motors on it. Um, but uh, it's, it's more accurate. It's a little bit better dialed in. It's not quite as responsive as the wired throttle is on the 800XC. Uh, something that I'm just kind of getting used to. Um, I also didn't say that it has e electronic cruise control on it. That works just like the cruise control on your car. Uh, it also has traction control and ABS, and I can turn those off or on depending on the road conditions that I'm, uh, that I'm in. If I'm off in the dirt, especially in the sand, I can turn everything off and have control over the rear wheel with just my throttle, uh, as opposed to having it be um, regulated for me otherwise by a little computer inside this thing's brain. Uh, let's see what else it has. Oh, it came with some rocks risers, and if you don't know what those are, uh, these are made to lift the handlebars up about uh, about an inch and a half, maybe two inches. Uh, and they're also insulated, so that kind of cuts down on the vibration that happens out on the bars. Now, I saw these on the original photographs of the bike when I was uh, taking a look at it. And I thought, that's going to be the first thing to go because I really wanted to restore the bike back to its original specs. But after riding with these, um, I'm not taking them off. Uh, I like them a lot, and I like the fact that there seems to be a real reduction as far as the handlebar vibration is concerned. And that also might be due to the spongy grips, uh, aftermarket grips that are on this as well. Um, what's interesting about the Rox risers and any other piece of hardware on this that is not stainless steel is that it's rusted. Uh, Florida, uh, I, I never really considered it being part of the rust belt, but uh, man, uh, that salt water just attacked everything on this. So I've also been in the process of replacing anything that's, uh, that's not stainless steel on the bike with uh, stainless steel fasteners. So let's see, that, that, uh, that, um, yeah, I think that's about it. Okay, so let's get into the real stuff. When I pitched this show in the last episode, I talked about the tools and Maslow's hierarchy of needs, some kind of stupid professorial thing that I would say. Um, but what I mean by that is there is this hierarchy of needs that you have when you're on a motorcycle. And just like Maslow's hierarchy of needs, you know, you got to take care of the basic essentials first off, and then you can get into your comfort items. And then before you know it, you're self-actualized, right? <laughs> and that's the reason why I ride a motorcycle is because uh, it keeps me self-actualized that way. But um, part of that foundation of the things that you really need to have while uh, you're on any kind of a motorcycle trip is the proper tools to go through and take care of yourself in the event that you get stranded. Now, if you're on the road and if you happen to have roadside, ass roadside assistance or roadside service, no big deal. You call a tow truck, which I've done a number of times, and along they come and they pop it up on a flatbed. And for 800 bucks, they'll take you to the nearest uh, motorcycle dealer. And I'm not exaggerating that term, $800. I paid it twice now because I live in Utah and I always seem to break down the farthest distance away from any motorcycle mechanic. Um, and I get tired of doing that. So now I have everything I need to take care of everything that might go wrong. Well, for, for the most part. Uh, the serviceable items that could go wrong on a motorcycle, like a flat tire, or uh, there's something that needs to be adjusted uh, or tightened or something along that line. Um, can't get into the real major mechanical stuff. But nonetheless, these are the tools that I carry with me. And they're underneath the pillion seat on the Tiger and on, on the Explorer and on the Tiger, both there. And I'm going to um, pull them out. 
And I've got a couple of uh, cases here. And I'll go through each of these uh, very quickly here so you have an idea of what's going on. Um, I have my main tool roll here. I have a secondary tool roll that actually came with the bike uh, uh, and it had the tiny little uh, tool, standard tool packet. I think there were like four tools in this uh, that are used on the motorcycle. And then I have a multi-tool that I get into here in just a minute. But let me start off with the main tool roll. And uh, one of the first things you need to know about this is, is it's not a tool roll. Uh, the roll itself uh, is made by a Coleman, and it contained a cutlery set for a service of f four people uh, camping, forks, knives, and, and uh, spoons that way. And uh, I, this is my second one. The first one's on the 800 XC, and uh, it just so happened that it was exactly the right size and had all the right types of uh, pockets for me to mount my tools in. So out went the forks and the knives and the spoons, and, uh, and it became my tool roll. Uh, the least expensive tool roll you could find, $11.99 on Amazon, including the, util the, uh, the cutlery, the, the utensils that way. Um, and and now, uh, it, now it's serving a better purpose here uh, for half of the amount of the cheapest kind of tool roll that I could find. And it's, uh, it's all ripstop, nylon, uh, I don't know how many denier it is, but uh, it works, it, it does its job. The second thing that's repurposed on this, though, is how the tool roll stays closed. And uh, years ago, this is going to be a little painful maybe for some of you to, to, to listen to, but I, I popped my biceps tendon not on just one arm, but on both arms, uh, about a year apart from each other. And, uh, and that really hurts if that's ever happened to you. I wouldn't recommend that to anybody. Um, so I had to keep my arm, both arms immobilized in this funky little uh, Robocop kind of sling thing. And the thing that held it together uh, were these bands. Uh, they're they're vel Velcro, uh, they have a latch on them, and, uh, and, and you can adjust them, you can cut them any way you want to. Well, what I really like about these is not only do they hold my tool roll together, but I can also wrap it around the brake of uh, the handbrake of, of, of any motorcycle, and now I have an emergency brake. So if, so if I need to keep the bike from rolling, if I take it out of gear or something that way, I always have a brake on by lashing that around there. So here's your... Um, a multiple use part there that was scavenged off of an arm brace <laughs> for what it's worth. Okay, well, let me uh, open up this thing. And uh, you, uh, I'll get another shot of this so you can see it a little bit better. Uh, from your left to right, uh, there's a very small pair of vice grips that can be used in the event that I should lose a, uh, a, a lever, which is probably not going to happen on either bike because they're protected. I have both um, 3 8 inch and quarter inch sockets involved in this. Um, I really like this tool and you can find it just about any kind of motorcycle shop that's out there. It's just a, it's a T handle with a, with a sliding uh, quarter inch. <laughs> I'm not gonna come off. <coughs> with a sliding uh, quarter inch socket adapter that will go through and uh, uh, apply to all sockets that I have in here. All the sockets in this, case go from eight millimeter up to 15 millimeters with the uh, with the quarter inch and then I have a couple uh, involved for the uh, three eighths inch as well on a larger scale one of which is a 15 millimeter that I use to go through and, and remove the lugs off of the rear wheel uh, on this bike as well I also have some uh, spanners in here that are open-ended and closed-ended with a ratchet in there and if you'll see on this particular spanner I also have about 10 feet worth of duct tape around uh, the handle of that. So you just never know when you're going to need a little bit of duct tape. Um, I have a quarter inch ratchet inside here, um, an extension, uh, more wrenches, a multi-purpose screwdriver that has a number of different types of bits in it. Uh, and then I have a circuit tester as well, uh, as well as some other odds and ends. Um, you might have noticed while I've been showing you all this that these have uh, little bands around them. Uh, two bands, in fact, to go through and show uh, that these belong to the 1200 XC, while my kit with the um, 800 XC has only one band around those. And this is a trick uh, that I learned back in the motion picture production days when uh, first ACs, first assistant camera operators would get together and put out all their tools to go through and work on a camera or clean a gate or whatever the case might have been. 
And often, if you didn't mark your tools with your own appropriate mark, they would get mixed up with somebody else's. And so now that we're taking two bikes out and, and we have two complementary tool sets there, I just wanted to make sure that all tools got back to the right spot. Um, so these have the two bands on them and the one, uh, the tool set on the 800 has uh, one band going around those. So um, that's it on this toolkit. You might have noticed there aren't any Allen wrenches in here and you really can't do a whole lot on this bike without any Allen wrenches. And that's what's inside of this kit here. So this was Triumph's original um, or their, their stock toolkit. Uh, it opens up and if I pull the tabs up on those, you can see that then all the Allen wrenches are inside here. And then also I keep a tube of Loctite uh, inside here and then some JB Quick Weld as well. I've used this, I've used this on a radiator. Uh, on a KLR before to go through and, and make sure that things uh, stay together so I can go ahead and get home. So that kind of um, takes care of uh, all the Allen wrenches that I need and any kind of uh, chemical tightening devices or ways to keep things together. The last thing I've got here is uh, just a simple uh, and cheap multi-tool. This is a, a little Chinese multi-tool that I found off of Amazon. Um, it has everything in it that I need here. Let me see if I can get the light. There we go uh, on it. Uh, as far as all the blades, the screwdrivers, the uh, the pliers, the wire cutters, everything's pretty well set within this. And for 20 bucks, um, it's gonna sit on the motorcycle and, and probably never be used. Um, but in the event that I need something like this, it's there, it's ready to be used. So that uh, kind of takes care of the kit for the Explorer. Um, one of the reasons why I'm crouching in a frame is because I have a really short microphone cable um, and I don't have a, the ability to go wireless with this if I, um, I just don't. I, I'm doing this on a shoestring. So if you're wondering why I'm doing this, that's the reason why. <laughs> I, I do have some fixtures and things here that go through illuminating. But you might be thinking after that last, uh, after talking about the toolkit on the Explorer, you're wondering, well, Eric, what happens if you get a flat tire? How do you fix a puncture? Or what are you going to do uh, with any of that? And that's where the 800 comes in. Um, first off, though, um, the here is the kit. I'll put these on. Screw vanity, right? Um, here's the other kit that's in the Triumph. Um, the same fastener that's on uh, that's on the other kit is on this one again. This is cannibalized off of an arm brace <laughs> that I don't have to use anymore, thank goodness. And here is um, the stuff uh, on this one. Now there are uh, a few departures here on this particular kit. Um, all of the Allen wrenches are inside for this one. Um, I also have some, uh, some bailing wire in here. Here I have a 3 8 bar instead of the um, uh, quarter inch bar. Uh, that complements the other kit, uh, a small screwdriver, uh, another driver. Um, this I have always found to be um, indispensable with any vehicle I've ever had. And that's there's a magnet out there. It's a telescoping magnet for me to go through and fish out parts out of places that I've dropped them in because invariably I will go through and do that. While the other kit had a quarter inch drive, this has a combination, uh, let's see if you can see that, 3 8 drive. There we go, a uh, 3 8 drive, um, a, I'm sorry, a quarter inch drive, a half inch drive, and the uh, 3 8 drive. It's got them all there. Uh, I have a full set of um, uh, stuff in here to go through and take care of anything that I want. And then this, uh, this is the extension for me to go through and uh, adjust my chain. It goes on to another inch here. Uh, but what I have wrapped around this is more duct tape and electrical tape as well. Uh, and that just seems to be the handiest place to go through and put that. And you'll notice this has the single stripe on it uh, versus the double stripes on the Explorer. So that's the uh, main toolkit. Oh, I have some zip ties in here. Uh, I know that there's a flashlight in here as well. Uh, it's all set up to do what needs to be done. Um, in addition to that, then I also have a Tusk um, tire repair kit. Uh, both for tube and tubeless. There's a CO2 in here and patch kits and, and then plugs, the whole bit is inside this kit. I've supplemented this, uh, I bought the kit and then I went through and found out what I needed to do, both kinds of tires, 
and it's all on there. And speaking of which, um, I have this little compressor. Um, I bought a, a new compressor that's on its way um, from a company where that's all they do is make motorcycle compressors. Uh, this one's been great. Uh, the thing is, it has a cigarette lighter, and I need one that goes just to kind of standard motorcycle hookup on this one. But this works fine on the Triumph, and has never failed me to go through and top off the tires and, and get me up to the pressures that I need. From time to time, I do air down, um, especially when I'm in sand, which is often while I'm in southern Utah, and so this comes in uh, pretty handy for that. Uh, I have another uh, multi-tool that I keep on this one. This is also another um, inexpensive one that has uh, all kinds of uh, nuggets here that I need or might need and then the tool itself. Uh, this also does a plier thing but it does it a little bit differently. There's a good knife uh, attached to that and then the pliers uh, pop out and become uh, right there. Um, uh, I kind of like the gadgets and stuff that way as um, you can figure out and sorry if I just embarrass anybody by growling at the camera all right um, besides all this stuff uh, I also have these tools and these don't fit under the seat very well uh, or at all but they do fit right down at the bottom of my pannier these are B pro B lockers or B breakers uh, rather um, they work together to go through and uh, insert into the rim and then pop the bead off the rim and then uh, with tire irons on the sides and uh, makes the hassle of changing a tire off of your rim less of a hassle. Um, they're weighty, they're big, um, but these store away very nicely in the pannier and, and, they, and I forget about them um, until I have a flat tire. Um, on, the, on my tire, I'm sorry, on my uh, 650, in, within four weeks, I had three flat tires, and you'd figure, you'd think the, after the first flat tire, I'd be able to go through and change my own out. Um, I didn't, not thinking, well, that was it. The odds are against me, right? What I came to find out was that the Shinko tire that I had was too big, just a little too big, and kept slipping on the rim and kept binding the tube inside the rim, and at the bind, it would slice open, and I would have a flat tire, and I went through three tubes before I realized that that was the deal. Sometimes I'm a little dense. So, so, oh, one last thing here that's uh, in the kit, a pair of gloves, because um, you know you don't want to get your hands all uh, messed up. Uh, these are a lightweight mechanics glove and they just slip right in under the seat. So um, if you have anything you want to add, if you have any other ideas here about what you're putting on your moto kit, uh, please feel free to go through and, and put them down into the comments. I'd be happy to go through and see what you got. If you want to find, uh, if you don't know where to find any of this stuff, I'll be glad to help you out with that as well. All right. Okay. Thanks for watching this episode of Utah ADV. Thank mm -hmm. you.